What's up, Air Cooled Army? It's your friend Pete again. Today, we're gonna do stage two pro built beam. What that means is we're installing Air Ride. And for all those uh, Air Ride owners uh, for a pre 65, 65 and earlier car, I'm gonna show you how we install it using one of our ultimate beams and a set of our pro built drop spindles. And you get to watch it today. If you like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up if you love it make sure you subscribe if you want one you know how to hit us up message us below send us a phone call or an email glad to help you out let's get to the action hardware, tie rod end, steering dampener, control arms, we welded on the lower shock relocators, we got the drop spindles all done with the German kingpins and link pins, we got the air sleeve shocks, we got the pull belt steering box, we got everything here. I'm going to set it up on a tripod and I'm not going to time lapse this one, I'm actually going to detail the steps and we'll start with the through rods. As we mentioned before, we're using an ultimate beam uh, in this installation. So we're first going to loop the control arm so they move fluidly in the arm. We're gonna do this on all four arms to make it easy. When it comes to the through rods, there's two ways to weld them together or glue them together. This application, we're gonna use Loctite and we're gonna twist them in, and once the glue sets, you're good to go. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Let's move forward. We're gonna slide them into the beam, and uh, sometimes the adjuster bolt in the center can, uh, can get in the way, so just loosen it, bring it out a little bit and tap them so that all the threads are showing outside the arm. We're going to install a washer, a thrust bearing, and a washer, followed by a jam nut. And since we're using an ultimate beam, we can dial it in uh, with a thrust by tightening both nuts uh, on one side and the other and getting a really nice feel so that the arm moves fluidly up and down. That's what you want. dialing these arms in you want to get them so that they can move very easy you don't want them to fall 
you want them to have some kind of resistance that's how you achieve the proper thrust on these uh, control arms to the bushings uh, in the beam just wanted to kind of clarify that you don't want them tight like super tight but you don't want them to fall down once you've uh, gotten past that step then we're going to lube the beam and usually uh, 10 pumps will probably get it to seep out the, uh, the union between the arm and the beam uh, after that is done uh, clean off the excess and you're on to the next step so we're going to measure uh, the offset of the arms and we use a straight edge here and on the lower arm we set the ruler on it and measure the upper arm offset it's uh, key to have a millimeter gauge uh, handy we'll link one down below and uh, then we'll use a chart to figure out how many shims are needed we'll also have a blow-up picture of this in the description below to kind of give you an idea of uh, the shim counts that are needed both inner on the uh, uh, the outer part of the uh, link pin as well as the inner part of the link pin which touches the uh, upper and lower control arms the shims usually have an eight count you are going to use uh, six on the top two in the bottom four on the top four in the bottom something like that uh, a ratio to make sure that you have the proper uh, camber up front some applications have a flat surface on the end of the arm and some have an o-ring groove on the o-ring groove we use a little bit of uh, grease and then we uh, are able to put the, the seal catch uh, on the arm and then we can install the spindle uh, a nice soft blow uh, rubber mallet is ideal don't pick up a hammer and destroy the finish. When adjusting link pins, um, we use a 916 wrench. You can use a 14, it's just a little tight. 916 has a little wobble to it. And you're going to notice that inside the hole in the upper and lower control arms, where the uh, bolts go, uh, you can slide a bolt through it once the little notch is, uh, is relevant there. And that allows you to pull the link pin tighter and looser um, to kind of shore up uh, the connection there. Um, we're using the stainless uh, hardware kit, um, link down below, and we use anises uh, on those hardware on that hardware so uh, you don't uh, seize them up together. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna show you the steps, just kind of look quicker. Kind of get to do this. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please comment below um, and we'll kind of clarify. I'm doing a voiceover now, uh, so sometimes uh, some steps can be a little rushed, but we'll get through it. Installing the uh, Pro Build steering box, uh, link down below as well. Um, we have centering pins on the back of the uh, box to allow the, the tilt of the box to kind of meet the same angle as your steering column. And so you tighten those to get the, the right angle. On all link pin air ride kits, we use what's called a quick steer, and this lengthens uh, the gap between the shock and the tie rod. If you don't use this, when you lay it down, lay the car down, the tie rod will hit the shock. And that's a no bueno. Next we installed the uh, steering dampener and now we're going to adjust for alignment. A little trick that I've figured out was uh, adjusting the tie rods uh, based off the spindle to make sh to, to parallel with the carpenter square uh, to the, the tubes left and right. Uh, obviously this is just what we call a quick alignment but it allows us to kind of get pretty close uh, we do recommend once you achieve your uh, 
ride height that you want is to have it four wheel alignment that is not just the front, that is rear as well. Then we fill the uh, Pro Build steering box with grease. Uh, we tighten it all up and we adjust the thrust on the worm gear. And then we're off to the through rods. Now you notice that before we never, we had this through rod hanging out. And uh, you don't want to leave that there, that'll snag your tire. So we use a uh, cutoff wheel and a sanding pad and we make them flush so that if your tire uh, connects it or touches it it won't damage the tire. On our air shock fittings we recommend Teflon tape and we recommend going the, uh, the way where you're not unpeeling the, the Teflon tape on uh, the shock itself so that way it helps with the sealing process. There it is, folks. Finished product. I hope you enjoyed uh, this film and this voiceover. Once again, if you have comments or questions, um, always refer to the install documents that are linked below um, that come with your air ride kit. Uh, we do include the assembly of what we did uh, on this beam uh, with your Pro Build beam and the air ride kits. So you'll be able to reference that along the way as well. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, we hope you have a great day.